Now let's bring in three members of the new Congress. Democratic Congresswoman-elect Debbie Dingell of Michigan, Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi. He is in charge of making sure the Republicans keep their Senate majority in 2016. And Republican Congresswoman-elect Barbara Comstock of Virginia. And I'll start with you uh, on what your leader said. He was pretty positive about getting things done. Um, but you are also going to have three or four likely presidential candidates. So it's not so easy to get things done when you have people with their own agendas in your caucus, huh? Well, I don't know about that. I think they'll be interested in accomplishments. And so from that standpoint, uh, the more things we can put on the president's desk in a bipartisan manner, and it will have to be bipartisan with 60 votes required in the Senate, I think the better we'll all look. So uh, I think we're into accomplishments in governing. And uh, Congresswoman-elect Comstock, I have to ask you about what one of your first jobs will be when you all come in this, this uh, coming week, and that is uh, the whole, I'm not sure if people realize, the whole House has to elect the Speaker of the House. Uh, John Boehner uh, needs 218 votes. Will you be one of them? Yes, and I expect, you know, we voted in our conference in November, and we um, they, they were, it was near unanimous. I think there was one weak voice that didn't say, um, that, that may have said nay. Um, there hasn't been a campaign or any phone calls that anyone has received, so I expect that'll move forward fairly he'll be, smoothly. He'll be safe. And, and I'll ask you, I mean, this, you have a, a very unique perspective coming in. Uh, you uh, were the first woman in history to be elected to a seat vacated by your husband who is living. A lot of times a wife takes over when, when their uh, spouse uh, is deceased. So given that, how do you transition um, as sort of with the Dingle legacy coming in? Well, first of all, um, I'm not trying to fill my husband's shoes. They're too big, and I don't think that anybody could fill them. And you've I'm, got your own shoes. I've got my as own do shoes. You all. I'm Debbie Dingle. <laughs> And I actually know both of, of the people at this table and respect them and that mm -hmm. they've been friends. And I hope that what I can bring is I've had a strong history of bipartisan relationships. Barbara dragged me out of the hospital. Many people know that John was in the hospital. She cared that I was okay. Um, I think we're all human beings and we've got to build trust between each other. I think the American people are tired of the partisan bickering in this country. All the freshmen, most of the freshmen that I've met have heard that mm -hmm. as a message and I think people want to work together to find solutions for this country. Well, that's nice to hear. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, after the break. Uh, we're going to squeeze one in and we're also going to talk about the Republicans' number one goal. Uh, despite what you just heard about working together, they want to unravel the president's agenda. How's that going to work? Stay with us. Congress returns this week with Republicans firmly in control. They will have 246 seats in the House, their largest majority since 1928, and 54 seats in the Senate. A big gain, but still short of the 60 votes needed to overcome procedural hurdles, namely a filibuster. I want to return uh, to our panel here and start with you, since we're talking filibuster and the, and the Senate majority. Uh, 54 is certainly a lot, but not, never mind filibuster proof, it's not veto proof. Uh, Given that, is it the right sort of idea to go down the path of putting pieces of legislation on the, on the floor, sending it to the president that you know he's going to veto? Well, we're going to send him uh, legislation that gets bipartisan support. For one thing, the House has already been sending us for the last two years bipartisan legislation. Uh, 300 bills, 50 dealing with job creation. So we're going to send the president a Keystone XL pipeline bill, it will be supported by quite a number of Democrats. Uh, I think the Iran legislation also, and then I think uh, McConnell mentioned uh, taking uh, little bits of Obamacare, for example, the medical device tax, the 40-hour work week. All of those things will be sent to the president with overwhelming bipartisan support in both the House and Senate. And uh, it will, it will, we'll see how the president reacts to that, but also it will be an opportunity for the first time in really six years for the American people to see how their elected senators actually feel about these issues. In, in the past, it's been all about uh, Harry Reid preventing votes from coming to the floor. You're going to see the Senate working five days a week, working on Fridays like the rest of America has to do, and, and, actually, and actually sending 
legislation, looking uh, at amendments, uh, uh, debating them, voting on them. The American people at the end of the day will have an idea how their senators feel about these issues and we'll see if we can send some things to the president that he will sign. Let's I would just, hope so. Let's just break down a couple of the sp specifics that you just mentioned. Co uh, Congresswoman-elect Dingell, the Keystone Pipeline, do you think the president should s sign that or veto it? I'm waiting to hear what the president's actually going to tell us about um, Keystone. I myself have not decided how I'm going to vote on it. Uh, I think it does have the potential to create jobs, but I haven't heard uh, what the administration's official position is. Uh, I, and I think what the president tells us is going to be very important. You have not had a chance to vote, obviously, because you haven't been in there, on what the House has voted on like 50 times, which is repealing Obamacare. I know the senator talked about doing things that are sort of, you know, uh, more incremental than that. But still, you know the president's going to veto most of what you send doing away with or at least changing his signature law. So why waste time trying if you say that you want to get things done coming in now? Well, I think it's important to focus on things that do have that support. And that's why on the Keystone Pipeline, you have the Teamsters, the Tea Party, and the Chamber all support the Keystone Pipeline. That's a pretty unique coalition. Getting that passed, I certainly hope the president will sign it because it creates jobs. We have other bills like that, that a lot of the jobs bills, um, you know, something like the medical device tax, which is related to both jobs and health care. You have dozens of, I believe, Democrats yeah. who support that in the House as well as the Senate. We had things like charter school bills that the House has passed you know, before I've been there that have, uh, again, dozens of Democrats on board. So there's lots of good policy that's good politics and actually will give the president an opportunity if he wants a legacy of success to support these kind of uh, jobs bills. And then we'll also deal with things like Obamacare because we have to speak for the people who elected us. And the regular order of Congress is now to debate these issues, not to have Harry Reid or somebody in committee hold it up, but to be getting these issues out in front of the people. I, I do support repealing Obamacare, but I also support any type of health care that we can get that will make it easier for people, veterans. And we have a veterans health care bill, getting that out there. You talk about debate. There is one thing that the House did not uh, debate last year, and that's Im <clears throat> immigration. Listen to what Senator Lindsey Graham told me about the issue of immigration. problems, but the gist of what he said is that if Republicans in the House and Senate fail to act in a responsible manner, it severely hurts Republicans' ability in 2016, uh, and then the chances of winning the White House for Republicans simply won't happen. Do you agree with that? Do you need to actually deal with immigration reform, specifically uh, the undocumented? Uh, well, I, I think we need to deal with immigration reform, but I do think it's just a, a major policy change like this needs to be done through legislation. That's what you learn in sixth grade. The House has to pass it. The Senate has to pass it. But let's the just talk, gets an right, but let's just talk politics. He did it. He did what he did uh, on executive uh, with his, his executive action because uh, the Congress didn't move. So, well, but uh, given your job uh, to keep Republicans in control, and obviously I'm guessing you want a Republican in the White House, do you need to move forward on this issue once and for all? I think the first thing we'll do is a strong border security bill. And frankly, that's why I think Speaker Boehner didn't take it up in the House uh, last term is because uh, he, he didn't have confidence that the administration would actually enforce the border security part of it. But I think once we do that, we will have a debate in this term of Congress about what to do with, uh, with those children who came through no decision of their own. and. and of what's the best way to handle that issue. I think we'll have that debate. And what do you think about that? As a Republican, is it time to, to, to deal with this? Well, first of all, I think we should deal with what people told us was the first priority, which was jobs. Every poll shows that every member of Congress can tell you that, so we should focus on jobs first. Then people have said the border security issue is why people don't trust this president. So I think that should be the first bill. And I do think immigration should be done piece by piece. And I think border security is very important. Until we do that, you can't have that discussion. But I think that discussion will be a lot easier with a booming economy moving forward. And we need to have that be the top priority. Not And the president wants people to and be arguing. We're trying to find points of agreement. And on that, one of the things that the president uh, and, and Republicans have said that they want to do as a point of agreement is 
free trade, more free trade agreements. You are from Michigan, where historically uh, the unions have not liked these free trade agreements. Will you back the president on this? Okay, I want to say three things very quickly. One, I wish we could get Republicans to say, stop repealing Obamacare. There are things that need to be improved, and it's little things that you're going after, and the, Obama, the health care plan is working. So, and there is a coalition of business, of one of the it, and unions, and a whole vast number of people on immigration that are screaming for immigration reform, just the way that you're saying on some of these other things. On trade, we've got some serious trade problems. I, uh, th th the fact of the matter is, is that there was bipartisan agreement in a letter last year in both the House and Senate on currency, and we've got a serious problem. The mother of all trade barriers is those that manipulate currency. The fact of the matter is Japan has got the most closed market in the world. Less than 6% of their entire market goes to Europeans, Koreans, or the domestic auto industry. This domestic auto industry can compete with any automobile in the country, but when, you're, when you are manipulating the yen, as the Japanese do, it gives several thousand dollars per vehicle uh, a subsidy that is then used against the domestic manufacturers. We can compete against anyone, but not the Bank of Japan or the Japanese government. They're so gonna, They're going to they're gonna be mad at the control room, but I can't go without asking you about Steve Scalise. You're, you're number three, a Republican in the House who allegedly spoke to a white supremacist group uh, in 2002. Do you still think he should be the House Majority Whip? Well, I think the story's been, um, th that story hasn't been accurate. And actually, I think when you look at his colleagues, Democrat and Republican alike from Louisiana, black and white, people who've worked with him, said he's a man of a good heart, good character, that has been my experience with him. And I think now that the story has been found to be something else, I think uh, those people who know him best and those people at home I think you're seeing that that story has just has gone away. Barbara Comstock, Debbie Dingell, Roger Wicker, thank you all for joining us. This was a fabulous discussion. I could talk forever. Oh, wait, I will when I see you in the hall.